Welcome back to the lab. Let's kick off the next phase of our UPS project. The last UPS I ever want to need to build. This is going to be good. There are a lot of details. There's a lot of little things that I want to talk about, but before we get lost in those details, what's the headline? What do I want the phase two UPS to be? I want our new UPS to be everything that the old one is, but better. I want to transfer power between sources faster. I want to move more power and handle that power more efficiently. There's a lot of issues that were uncovered while testing the first UPS. And a lot of these problems stemmed from a couple root causes. The most common cause for flaws in our UPS was simply missing things because we were in a hurry. The second most common cause for these flaws was neglecting some fundamental thing about how the system works which led to architecture breaking issues. A great example of missing details is the fact that our original design drove the MOSFET gates with too much voltage, which broke them. A great example of missing something fundamental is neglecting to add a snubber to our push-pull converter. Missing enough details like this really starts to take a toll on the performance of a system. That's exactly what we saw. We kept adding reworks, mitigations, fixes, but we could never quite get our UPS to where we would like it to be. I'm looking for hundreds of watts, and we never really saw more than a hundred. Not ideal. There are a lot of issues that were uncovered, little things like the output filter inductors getting too hot, but also big things like transistors blowing in half. There are many points where improvement is probably required in our design. Let's start with the shorter list. Let's start with the pieces of our design that we're, we're very happy with and we're going to carry forward into phase two without any changes. Our inverter stage works Great. Voltage regulation starts with a custom control loop running in our microcontroller and establishes control and monitoring through a series of isolated gate drivers and amplifiers. Starting with a DC bus and converting this into AC works very, very well. That DC bus is not going away nor is the two level inverter stage that establishes a sine wave via PWM which is then filtered. And actually, well, that's it. Every other detail of this design will need at least a minor tweak. Speaking of minor updates, here's a great one. Reducing cost. One great example of where cost can be removed from our design is the inverter transistors. We're using some very expensive gallium nitride MOSFETs, and I really don't think they're technically necessary. These things cost like $15 each, and I found some parts I expect that will work based on traditional silicon FETs for only a couple dollars. We're really gonna need to trim this cost out wherever possible because we're adding cost in other areas of the design to fix things. In general, trimming down excessive parts of the design will save cost, and that'll play into the parts that we need to add. Using more service mount parts, having more common parts reused throughout the design, those things will all save some manufacturing cost as well. We've got some big changes planned right now for thermal management at least, Right now we're using absolutely massive through-hole soldered heat sinks, and I'd much rather switch to a push-pin spring-mounted design because not only will they probably be cheaper and easier to get on and off, they'll also be easier to mount a fan to. My plan is to switch to surface mount FETs and then use that heat sink suitable for cooling these parts, the spring clip one. We'll then add some active cooling directly on top of those heat sinks, like we were saying, and that's much more organized than our We'll add some fans and figure out the details later mentality that we used in phase one. What else? Let's talk through what else needs to be done. We absolutely need to get low voltage, high current DC switching out of our design. That isn't cheap, it isn't easy, it isn't efficient, it's just less scary than switching between two 300 volt supplies. Let's give ourselves a bolus of courage and fix that. Speaking of high voltage, I need to shift away from the push-pull converter to avoid the issues stemming from the two factors that we found. The push-pull topology does not provide a hook for high side clamping, and the leakage inductance from our hand-wound high turns ratio transformer wasn't ideal. Therefore, I think we should pick a new topology that can convert a large amount of power from low voltage to a few hundred volts, replacing the push-pull. I think it will also be necessary to design some electronics capable of converting from 120 volts AC to high voltage DC with reasonable efficiency and good power factor. These changes will effectively remove the 120 volt AC to 24 volt DC supply and will keep all of the routing between converters high voltage and low current much easier to manage. I've gained a lot of confidence while working with high voltage circuits. 
they're actually pretty fun and not as terrifying as they used to be. I want my knowledge of high voltage DC circuits to guide our design. So I haven't run all the numbers here. It isn't totally vetted. Consider what I'm about to say more dreaming than engineering. But the idea, like we said, is to avoid the low voltage DC switching. Our plan to do that, to implement this, is an AC to DC power factor corrected supply that generates something on the neighborhood of 300 volts DC. If we then design our DC to DC H bridge converter to output 250, then by nature, whenever AC is present, the DC to DC converter will have a duty cycle of 0%. And that's because the measured output voltage will be higher than the set point. So the duty cycle should be zero. A high voltage supply will always take priority in this way. It will be regulating when the other one is saying, nope, we've got enough, turn it off. However, as the high voltage DC bus fails, that DC to DC converter will naturally ramp on, preventing the DC bus from drooping below 250 volts. In this way, no hard switching is required, and it may not seem like much on the surface, but this change may completely eliminate the need for a hot swap controller and the need for relays. That is not insignificant, and it's actually a pretty big deal. I think we may be able to use simple diodes rather than active switching on that DC link too, managing complexity. We're handling less than 10 amps, and this choice could potentially improve modularity substantially. All power sources are a one-way street, either onto or off of that DC link, and I get pretty excited when I think about this. Use a series of ever-falling voltage set points on DC regulators to decide which outputs take priority over others. As a more general point, I haven't really been impressed with the robustness of our design. I think that we could find a way to harden our UPS architecture and that modularity may, see, may be a solution here. I don't want to need to scrap a massive expensive board because a couple transistors blew up an inverter stage. My goal is to turn this into a backplane daughter card system that allows for adding AC or DC inputs or outputs into any slot. This allows for tuning the performance of everything separately before moving forward. After all, if we'd rather have one AC input, two DC inputs, why shouldn't we be able to do that? If we'd rather have three AC sources, why shouldn't we be able to do that? If I want to add a 5 volt DC output, why not? If we discover an error in our design, like the AC to DC converter module, but the rest of our system is working great, then we should be able to redesign that AC to DC converter module and leave everything else alone. After all, the chassis we're designing natively supports daughter cards. Let's use that to our advantage. There's a standard form factor that we can use here, the PCIe expansion card form factor, and there's a lot of unused or underutilized space in our box right now. Let's start using that space more responsibly to do something awesome. Those are the main changes I'd like to make, but there's a lot of features that are in limbo right now. They don't not work, but they don't meet our requirements. So what about those? The battery charger technically works. It's just super slow. Why? Well, the power supplies that feed that charger are, they can't handle the power. We're going to need a microcontroller responsible for managing these batteries, doing the balancing, charging, but more importantly, we need to break out the notepad and paper to redesign some proper DC switch mode power supplies. Regular buck, boost, flyback, whatever. Nothing fancy, but still critical. We need more power than these off-the-shelf modules can deliver in this form factor. Plus, those supplies are loud, like audibly loud. I, I can hear them do their low switching frequency. No thanks. Let's bump that up a bit and uh, stop hearing it. But just in general, the microcontrollers we're using are a bit underpowered. Turns out they don't have floating point units like we originally thought, and that makes real-time RMS calculations pretty difficult. That makes real-time, well, a any math pretty difficult. I'm going to investigate potential alternative parts here. I want to have a controller capable of generating the high accuracy sine wave that we've always been after. We need to get that behind the wheel of our inverter, even if that means needing to drop the microcontroller on our custom PCB rather than working with the current modular approach. We'll need to think a little more about programming and managing that, but it's nothing impossible. The other thing on my mind here is that I'd prefer to use an auxiliary power source for the control circuit, battery charger. Allowing a low voltage DC input for the battery charger and control functions will lead to easier integration with renewable energy down the road. If we have a battery management system, 120 volt DC input, and if 11 and a half to 26 volt DC input, I think we'll have plenty of ways to get power into our UPS. Of course, there are so many details that we glossed over just now. We've been testing a variety of circuits over the past few months and uncovered many minor bugs. I can't possibly speak to them all now, but if you're curious, 
check out our Project Darwin playlist and dive in. These are the big problems that I can't wait to tackle. I think that a lot of careful design will help us a lot, but we have a good solution to start before we're done. Our high level goals are to increase the output power to approximately 2000 watts, reduce cost, and reduce the complexity of our design. By breaking our UPS architecture into logical blocks on daughter cards that connect through a backplane, it's easier to focus on each design and not get lost in the details of how everything comes together. If the backplane specification is good and we design everything to meet it, there shouldn't be any compatibility issues here. Should save us a lot of headache, just stitching all of the converters together too. So that's what I believe our UPS will need to be successful in the future. And I think that the UPS we're talking about now is much, much closer to the last UPS we'll ever need to design. Our requirements haven't really changed with the exception of power level, but we're going to bring the UPS into compliance. This project is on a good path and we're going to be diving in very soon. If you're excited for more custom switching power supplies, custom transformers, custom inductors, and some good old electronics design, then subscribe to be notified of our future videos where we'll be designing a power factor corrected AC to DC power supply and then designing the custom magnetic components required to make it work. I'm excited to see how these design changes are going to work. If you are too, let me know by hitting that like button on this video, following us on Twitter, or leaving a comment letting us know what you enjoyed. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. So thanks for watching EU for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye!